What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so this is the situation we have right here. This is Invest 98L we're taking a look at. This is Hurricane Fiona, that the latest satellite imagery from the Turks and Caicos. We're going to be going over all of this tonight real quickly. So first of all, first and foremost, Fiona has strengthened to a 125 mile per hour category 3 hurricane. It is now is now in the high end uh, area of that hurt of that category. We now have tropical storm Gaston in the central Atlantic right here. It has strengthened. It's expected to remain a tropical storm for the next five days as those environmental conditions are not conducive for much further development. We have this area of interest right here, which had a 20% chance of formation at 2 o'clock. Now we have a 40% chance of formation. We're going to go ahead and go over this real quickly. A tropical wave is forecast to move off the west coast of Africa on Thursday. Environmental conditions are forecast to be conducive for at least gradual development of the system for a couple of days thereafter while the system moves slowly northward between the West Africa and the Cabo Verde Islands to the end of the week. 40% chance of, the for of formation in the next five days, 0% in the next 48 hours because it's not out to sea yet. So area of interest that we might need to pay attention to in the next few days. But this is the big uh, story for tonight right here. And the reason I say this is because A, this is heading towards land, and B, we have models of this thing rapidly intensifying and hitting Cuba and the United States. So let's go ahead and get go over this real quickly. First of all, we now have a 90% chance of formation in the next five days. At 2 o'clock, we were at 60 and 80%. But when I made my last video... I believe it jumped to 40 and 70%. I'm not entirely sure on those uh, f figures. Please do not quote me on that. But this is what we're looking at right here. A tropical wave is producing showers and thunderstorm activity in a few, hundred, a few hundred miles east of the Windward Islands. The system continues to show signs of organization and will likely become a tropical depression within the next two to three days. The disturbance is forecast to move west-northwestward across the southern Windward Islands, including uh, Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada, all those areas that got hit by tropical storm Bonnie before it was a tropical storm. But anyway... Yeah, and then it will move into the Central Caribbean uh, Sea late this week. Interest in the Windward Islands should uh, closely monitor the progress of the situation as heavy rainfall and gusty winds could affect these islands beginning on Wednesday. 90% chance of formation in the five days, 70% chance of formation in the next 48 hours. So yeah, it's moving through pretty conducive conditions right here. Let me show you the warm water that this thing's moving through. 29 plus degrees Celsius, about 84 plus degree Fahrenheit warm water throughout the Caribbean Sea, throughout the Gulf of Mexico, and throughout where it is right now. The wind shear also, it's open season for this thing. It's moving through a thin pocket of, of low wind shear, and it is capitalizing off of that. As you can see, pretty much a, a decent chunk of the Caribbean Sea, at least the area it's going to be moving through, has low wind sh to moderate wind shear right there. And the Gulf especially, take a look at this, 5 to 10 knots of wind shear throughout all of this. So yeah. This thing is moving through a very conducive environment, and it's open season for this thing. Let's first go ahead and take a look at the track models and the intensity, and then the intensity models. Track models. This was initiated at 18Z. Majority of the models have this thing uh, shifting towards the northwest, hitting Cuba before entering the Gulf of Mexico. Although we do have a minority of them, including the H wharf, having this thing approaching Honduras and Nicaragua. Something that we're gonna have to pay attention to. Although the European and GFS models have it doing the former, we'll have to keep an eye on it. Intensity models. This thing is expected to strengthen into a tropical storm within the next 24 hours, or at least a tropical storm equivalent, according to these models. And then it will continue to gradually develop before uh, entering into the Caribbean Sea and starting to strengthen into a hurricane. We have some models having this as a major hurricane. The COTI has this thing rapidly intensifying to a Category 4. I don't think it's as outlandish as I normally would think because of the conditions that this thing's going through. What I'm trying to say here is everything is on the table, and that's basically the projection I'm keeping right now. Now, if we take a look at the, basically, okay, this is the wrong tab. If we take a look at the model runs right here, we're going to show you two new runs of the GFS and one new run of the European, because the GFS and European have been in more in agreement when it comes to stuff like this. They're not entirely agreeing on the intensity, but they are agreeing more on the track of this, which is kind of going to be impulsive uh, considering what we're looking at right here. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this right here. 
The GFS has this thing moving through Trinidad and Tobago, organizing, uh, developing, starting to strengthen into a hurricane in the next five days. And then it has this thing moving west of Jamaica, making landfall in Cuba as a 941 millibar hurricane right there. That's either a high-end Cat 3 or low-end Cat 4 right there. And then it moves into the Gulf. And then take a look at this. The pressure drops to 932 millibars, and then it starts to uh, weaken as it's approaching land, which... Unless it's undergoing an eyeball or placement cycle at that point, I don't entirely believe, but this is the GFS and this is 10 days out. So an important disclaimer right there. This is several days out and anything can change. But we have seen uh, more consistent runs of this hitting either Alabama or the Florida Panhandle right here. So that's what we're looking at right there. It makes landfall in the Florida Panhandle, moves through uh, the United States right there, and that's pretty much where we're at with that. The 18Z is also in somewhat of agreement with the 12Z right there. So we're seeing a lot of consistency with these models, ladies and gentlemen. This thing organizes, develops, strengthens into a potential hurricane, it actually moves it a little bit more to the west of Jama uh, Jamaica, actually. And then it makes landfall on the western tip of Cuba as a 946 millibar hurricane enters the Gulf. And look at this. 929 millibars right here, ladies and gentlemen, as it's approaching the Florida panhandle. 929. That's a, that's a Category 4 hurricane right there. Now, keep in mind, this is the GFS run, and this is nine days out, so please keep that in mind. Then this, they have this thing starting to weaken a little bit, down to 953 millibars, which, unless there's an eyewall replacement cycle that's going to be going on with, uh, on with that, I'm not entirely sure with that. So this thing makes landfall, moves through uh, the deep south into Virginia right there, and that's pretty much what we're looking at when it comes to that. The European model run has a similar agreement when it comes to the track of it. The intensity, though, is a little different. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The European has this thing organizing and developing in the Caribbean Sea a little bit later than the GFS, actually. It doesn't have it strengthening early on as the GFS runs have, but the European does have it start uh, starting eventually right here. It starts to slowly organize and develop, make landfall in Cuba as a Category 1 hurricane, enter the Gulf, potentially become a major hurricane with pressure of 954 right there before turning towards uh, before turning towards the north of the St. Uh, St. Petersburg Tampa area and making landfall there as around a, a hurricane in the, in the 960s mil, uh, millibar range right there. So again, this thing unless this thing is uh, experiencing an eyeball replacement cycle, I don't think it's going to be really weakening that much when it comes to la landfall. So yeah, this is the latest runs I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, that's going to pretty much wrap this video up. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. We have been getting subscribers like crazy today, so thank you very much for subscribing. And I hope you guys continue to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So with that being said, have a wonderful day. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as well, and stay safe.